Okay, so we're finally going to talk about neural networks and the whole point of all this whole thing, why we spent so much time looking at the feature regression model, uh, was we want to say that uh, very wide, very wide neural networks, that they're approximately like a random, a random feature regression model. Okay, so let's look at how could this possibly be, uh, without even discussing the definition of a neural network, uh, how could it possibly be that uh, very wide neural network, how, how could it possibly be like a random feature regression model? What would the features be? What are the features? And the key thing to realize is that the feature regression model is linear in the weights. So this one is linear, linear in the parameters. And neural networks are famously nonlinear, nonlinear. So that's the key difference um, between neural networks and like this linear feature regression model we did. Um, but we're saying it's approximately true. So how could it possibly be that something nonlinear behaves like approximately like something linear? The answer is it's going to be close to its Taylor series approximation. So the Taylor series approximation you can apply to any nonlinear function, and the first you know the first two terms give you a linear function. And if something nonlinear is behaving like it's linear, that means that it must be close to its Taylor series approximation. So let's write down write down what that is. So basically, this whole claim is that uh, very wide neural networks they're approximately like their linear version, um, their Taylor series version. So if f of x theta so in these videos now, f before it was the feature regression model. Now f f stands for function. Uh, they're going to be the uh, neural networks. So the whole point is that f of x theta is not linear in theta, but we're hoping that it's going to be approximately the same as f lin, f lin, which is the linear the linearized version of the network with respect to the weights. And what is that? That's exactly this thing. So the linearized version, if you remember your Taylor series from Calc one, uh, that's this thing. F of x theta zero. That's what it is. At the initialization, theta zero, plus the gradient, that's like the derivative, evaluated at theta zero times theta minus theta zero. So this is the derivative, and this is how far away we are from initialization. So uh, that is the whole the whole shebang is really hidden in this in this approximation, um, and the whole point is that if you look at this model, you will see we have something transpose something transpose times the weights times the weights, so the weights are here. And here we are multiplying something by the weights, something times the weights, something, which multiplies the weights or the parameters. Uh, I, I use the words weights and parameters interchangeably, so maybe it would be more accurate to say parameters here because neural networks have weights and biases, which together make the parameters. Um, but the thing that is multiplying the parameters, that thing is the features, so this thing, can interpret f lin, f lin of x theta is a feature regression model. Uh, what are the the features? The features are whatever multiplies the weights, uh, whatever multiplies the parameters. So the features are are this phi of x is equal to the gradient of f of x theta zero. So the thing multiplying the weights, those are the features. So this whole shebang is, is saying that uh, neural networks behave like a feature regression model where the features are given by the gradient of the network. And part of the reason that you can see this is going to work is we said in the last videos that uh, the size of the difference, how far away you go from initialization, it goes down as the network gets bigger and bigger. So the more parameters you have, the less each individual parameter has to change. And that's going to sort of help justify this approximation. This approximation is exactly true at initialization. And as long as the weights don't change very much, the approximation will re remain true. So that's one way to justify what's going on. And that's precisely uh, the statement of this paper uh, that I, I'm presenting about wide neural networks of any width. So uh, that paper says something about how 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 f minus f lin behaves. So let me, let me write down what that, that statement is saying. That's one of the statements we're going to prove. Yeah, here it is. So here, here's the here's the theorem, and this is from that paper. Uh, let me let me not get the the citation wrong. Okay. 
Okay, so I looked it up. Uh, here it is. It's it's this is the archive number. So it's the archive 1902.06720. Also in the notes, uh, and it's it's the title of the paper is Wide Neural Networks of Any Depth Evolve as Linear Models Under Reading Descent. Okay, there's a lot of authors. I don't want to spell anyone's name wrong, so please look in the notes for the exact uh, uh, thing. But basically, the main uh, the main punchline of this of this paper is the approximation f minus f lin. How big is that error? And uh, so they have. I think there's three ways they express this error. So one is like this: the the difference f lin of x theta t minus f of x theta t. So how big is f minus f lin? Along the path of gradient descent, this is the path theta t that you get on by gradient flow. This is big O of 1 over square root of n. Uh, theta t minus theta. So the norm of the whole vector is order 1. And because the vector is like size n, where n is the number of parameters, so this is like an n, n par number of parameters, uh, then this is the same thing as saying that theta t minus theta 0, the components uh, are, are like or also order 1 over square root of n par. So if the whole norm of something of size n par is order 1, then each individual component must be like 1 over square root of n par. Um, and finally, uh, the thing that matters, uh, so this is the reason we did the whole discussion before about kernels. The relevant thing is the kernel for these models, and the error in the kernels is also small. So if you compute the kernel um, for the evolution of f, so what is that? That's this, this thing. So doing the gradient transpose times the gradient, uh, that is that is the equivalent of doing phi x transpose phi x prime. Uh, and what we were doing before, these are the features transposed with the features. So in this case, it depends on theta. Um, but the point is that this is approximately the same as what it is on initialization. So let, let me write it like this. Let's write to k lin. So the linear model is a feature, a random feature regression model. It has a kernel k that we discussed before. And it has the kernel Kalin, we'll call it Kalin. And uh, so this is the kernel for the real problem. This is the kernel for the linearized problem. And they are close together in that their error is also 1 over the square root of the number of parameters. So as the number of parameters gets big, as the width of the layers gets really big, this approximation, f lin minus f, becomes more and more exact. And we know how big the approximation is. So that's the whole punchline of this thing. I'm going to break down the uh, individual results sort of piece by piece in a few other videos. But that's the high-level overview. Uh, without even telling you what the definition of a neural network is, uh, neural networks are like a feature regression model. And the uh, the features are, are these things. Those are the features. OK, I'm going to stop there.